smokes. I mean, can you believe it? Christmas, you know, whether you're feeling all Christmassy or not, right? Christmas is a week away. What? Lord help us, right? (laughs) Now, this means, of course, that we are moving right along with our Sunday Advent series. Now, in week one, uh, we looked at the theme of hope. And uh, that message was titled, Hope Sees the Unseen. And through the eyes of George Bailey and his wonderful life, we really got to take it into a deeper place to know that there is always room for hope. Let's just say that together. There is always room for hope. Now, last week, uh, Steve Morris and I held our peace talks, and uh, we explored the theme of peace in our message titled, uh, Blessed Are the Peacemakers. And that's you. That's you and me. We are the peacemakers, and we are the peacekeepers. Let's just say that. We are the peacemakers, and we are the peacekeepers. Now, today we're going to spend some time with one of everybody's favorite Advent themes, love. And uh, my talk title today is Your Love Matters. Let's say that. Your loves matter. My love matters. Thank you. (laughs) So before we dive in, though, I want to just share a really quick little story with you because I know we have lots of parents and grandparents, both in person here and and online, so this is for you. So this is a story about a brother and sister, Aiden and Rosie, and they were spending the night at their grandparents, and it was just a few nights before Christmas, but right before they got ready for bed, they kneeled down to say their prayers, and out of nowhere, out of the blue, Aiden starts talking in this really loud voice, and he says, Dear Lord, Please get Santa to bring me a drum set, a mountain bike, and a telescope. And with that, Rosie just pops right up. She says, why are you shouting? God is not deaf. And he says, I know that, but Granny isn't. (laughs) Okay, so you heard it here. If you're still looking for gift ideas, just tune into their prayers. Amen? Okay, so we're going to take a look at the power of love. Now, our Unity co-founder, Charles Fillmore, he taught this about love. He said, of all the attributes of God, love is the most beautiful. He said, love is the great harmonizer and the great healer. Love binds together the whole human family. Isn't that just like a wonderful, like, bomb to the soul? Isn't that just beautiful? Let's just say that last one together. Love binds together the whole human family, right? So with all that's happening this year around the world, you know, whether it's um, ongoing political division, cost of living, opioid crisis, gun violence, and so much more, right? Ukraine, Israel, Gaza, uh, the Democratic Republic of of Congo, uh, Yemen, uh, South Sudan, all of it, all of that, right? Given this, do you feel like you're sharing love in your life in a way that you know that you could be? Are you sharing love in your life in a way that you know that you could be. Now, I ask this because, you know, we hear it said all the time that love is the greatest power in the universe, right? And as Mr. Fillmore said so eloquently, it is the great harmonizer. It is the great healer. And I am 100% in agreement with this. I believe this. I know this to be true. However... Love is a choice. Love is a choice. In other words, long before you are loving, you have to make the choice to love, right? And so in many ways, it's really the power to choose love is the greatest power in the world. Are you with me? Does that make sense? So my question for you to marinate on this morning is, 
why don't we just choose to be more loving? Why don't we just simply choose to be more loving? I mean, every human wants to be loved, and every human wants to love, right? So why do we hold back? Now, please hear me. Please hear me. I am not talking about crossing lines and invading personal boundaries here because healthy boundaries are healthy, right? And I encourage you to set and honor healthy boundaries. But when we know that choosing love is the greatest power in the universe, and we know that love is the great harmonizer, and we know that love is the great healer, and it binds together the whole human family, why aren't we just doing more of the one thing that everybody is yearning for? Everybody is yearning for this. So this reminds me um, of the teaching from everybody's favorite traveling salesman, the Apostle Paul, um, in one of the letters that he wrote to the Corinthians. Now, it's pretty well known, so if you grew up in church, it'll sound familiar. If you've been to a wedding, it will sound familiar. So here's what he wrote in chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians. Now, especially if you've heard this a million times, tune in and lean into this and hear it in a fresh way. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It doesn't insist on its own way. It's not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. And of course, Paul went on to write, these three things remain, faith, hope, and, and the greatest of these is love. Amen. So I want to just circle back now to that idea that I mentioned about healthy boundaries because some of this can be a little tricky, right? So yes, Scripture does say bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, but please hear me, that doesn't mean anything and everything, right? Healthy boundaries. Let's just say that together. Healthy boundaries, right? And if you need some help with that, let me know. Now, it also means that love recognizes love, even in the dark moments. I mean, after all, darkness is just the absence of light. Because when we flip on, when we flip the switch, when we turn the light on, the darkness disappears. You know, this is why you are the light of the world. You, you, you are the light of the world, and you are meant to shine. That's why we say that every Sunday. Can I get an amen? And so one of the ways that we can turn on the light is to just be more real, right? Like be real with ourselves, be real with each other. And so I'm going to share an excerpt with you from the beloved story, The Velveteen Rabbit by Marjorie Williams. Now, how many of you this is a favorite for? Yes, yes. Hmm. What is real? Asked the rabbit one day when they were lying side by side. What is does it mean having that buzz inside you and a stick-out handle? Real isn't how you're made, said the skinned horse. It's something that happens to you. When a child loves you for a long, long time, not to just play with, but really loves you, then you become real. Does it hurt? asked the rabbit. Sometimes, said the skinned horse. Does it happen all at once, like being wound up, he asked, or bit by bit? It doesn't happen all at once, said the skinned horse. You become, and it takes a long time. That's why it doesn't happen often to people who break easily or have sharp edges or who have to be carefully kept. Generally, 
by the time you're real, most of your hair has been loved off and your eyes have dropped out and you just get loose in the joints and very shabby. But these things don't matter at all because once you are real, you can't be ugly except to those people who don't understand. Mm. So here's to having our hair loved off <laughs> and our eyes drop out, right? I'm already thinking I'm a little loose in the joints, right? But yeah, isn't that beautiful? So if you leave with nothing else today, my prayer is that you leave here knowing, like know that you know that you know that your love matters, period. Your love matters. And we really do owe it to ourselves and to the people in our lives to be real, don't we? I mean, if you were on the other side of the pandemic, you owe that to yourself and to others to just be real, right? To share and connect. I mean, if you really think about it, why in the world would you want to do anything else? Why would you want to do anything other than create more of this thing that we all have to give? Amen? You know, one of the things, one of the things that I fell in love with, with unity very, very early on, um, and I know that some of you share this, the first time I heard our core belief that we are all made of sacred worth, I'm like, I'm in. Anybody else? We are all made of sacred worth. Let's say that together. We are all made of sacred worth. You know, this is why you, you hear me say so often that really there's only one thing that ever needs to be healed, and that is our sense of separation. And we all go through it. You know, there are times when we feel separate from our good, we feel separate from each other, we feel separate from our health and well-being. We feel separate from our prosperity. We feel separate from our creativity. We feel separate from our own power, right? But you always have the power to empower yourself. That is a gift from God in you. You always have that power. So here's the thing. I guarantee you, that if you reflect back on some of the missteps that you've made in your life, underneath it all was a feeling of separation, a sense of separation, because you forgot just how sacred you are. And here's how I know that. Number one, I've been there. Sometimes I am there. I get it. I truly do. I understand, right? This is why. Look around, please. Just take a moment and just look around. This is why. This is why spiritual community is vital. It is vital. Because we may think we have lots of things to do, but we really only have one thing to do, and that is to remind each other the truth of who you are. Amen? Amen. The second thing is because when you really do understand and you really start to get the value of your sacred worth, you are automatically going to make better choices. <laughs> Isn't that a relief? Isn't that a relief? You know, it's just like Dr. Maya Angelou said, do the best you can until you know better. And when you know better, <laughs> yes. Is there anybody who doesn't understand that? I mean, that part's pretty simple, right? Of course, Dr. Maya also said, I have learned that you can tell a lot about a person by the way he handles three things, a rainy day, lost luggage, and tangled Christmas tree lights. <laughs> that is true, isn't it? Yeah, every year. Uh, okay, so I trust that you are setting and honoring healthy boundaries in your life. But I do want you to remember that there is a very fine line between building a boundary and building a border. Amen? Okay, so to help anchor uh, 
how much your love matters. I want to leave you with a lovely rendition of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, only this is called the Christmas version by Sharon Jane. So just really enjoy this. If I decorate my house perfectly with plaid bows, strands of twinkling lights, and shiny balls, but do not show love to my family, I am just another decorator. If I labor away in the kitchen, baking dozens of Christmas cookies, preparing gourmet meals, and arranging a beautifully adorned table at mealtime, but do not show love to my family, I'm just another cook. If I give all that I have to charity, but do not show love to my family, it profits me nothing. If I trim the spruce with shimmering angels and crocheted snowflakes and sing in the choir, but do not focus on the Christ, I have missed the point. Love stops the cooking to hug the child. Love sets aside the decorating to kiss the husband. Love is kind, though harried and tried. Love doesn't envy another's home that has coordinated Christmas china and table linens. Love doesn't yell at the kids to get out of the way, but is thankful that the kids are there to be in the way. I'm going to say that one again. Love doesn't yell at the kids to get out of the way, but is oh so thankful that they are there to get in the way. Love doesn't give only to those who are able to give in return, but rejoices in giving to those who can't. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Video games will break, pearl necklaces will be lost, golf clubs will rust. But giving the gift of love will endure. And so ends our message for today. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you.